Hello everyone. So this is my next session on system Verilog for verification. In this session, we will discuss another concept for predictable simulation and advanced test bench control that is event reasons in system Verilog. So let's start it. So what is event reasons in system Verilog? Event reasons define the execution order of various simulation activities within a single time stamp. So in digital simulations, multiple processes often interact concurrently and they can assign values to the same signal at the same time or they, or they may depend on each other. So without a structured execution order of these multiple processes, these interactions may lead to race conditions. So to handle these race conditions, system Verilog divides each simulation time slot into multiple ordered reasons, which ensures that events are executed in some deterministic sequence. So this division allows for predictable simulation behavior, which ensures consistent results across different simulation runs, means each reason define which event will occur in which reason. So it provides consistent results. Next, race condition avoidance. It separates read and write operations. Say there are two blocks present in the design. One block is writing and another block reading the same variable in the same simulation time. So this may lead to race condition. But because of different event reasons in system Verilog, it prevents simultaneous access to the same signal. And hence, it avoids race condition. Next, clear separation of concerns. It distinguishes between design logic, test bench stimuli and assertions. Means it clearly divides a responsibility between design, test bench and assertions. This slide shows the complete event reason flow within a single time slot in system Verilog. So here the simulation is broken into multiple reasons and each has a specific purpose which ensures predictable behavior and avoid race condition. All of these reasons execute sequentially within a single time slot. So let's understand each of these reasons in detail in further slides. So first we have pre-pawned reason. So this reason is used to sample values that are used by the concurrent assertions. Also note that this is a read only reason and only the values of variable that are used in the assertions are sampled in the pre-pawned reason of current time slot and actual assertions are evaluated during the observed reason. So this reason executes immediately after advancing simulation time and it executes only once in each time slot. There is no way to execute this reason again in the same time slot. Uh, uh, example is this. So here in this assertion, rec is sampled in the pre-pawned reason, which ensures that the value of rec is captured before any update occurs on the rec in the current time slot. So if say any update occurs to the rec in any other reason, but that won't be considered because the value of the rec is already captured in the pre-pawned reason and it would be evaluated in the uh, observed reason. So next we have active reason. So this is the main reason where most of the procedural code executes. So it executes all module blocking assignments, continuous assignments, as well as the non-blocking assignments. For non-blocking assignments, it evaluates only the RHS and the actual update on the LHS app happens in the NBA reason. Also, it executes the dollar $display, dollar $write, as well as dollar $finish command if they are part of the RTL design. Example is this. So here A equals to B, this is the blocking assignment. So it executes immediately. And next is non-blocking assignment. So D is evalu evaluated here in this reason. But the actual update on C happens in the NBA reason. So next is inactive reason. So this reason holds events which are scheduled to execute after all active events such as hash zero delays. So for example, those events which are, shed, which are supposed to be executed in the active reason set, but say if you add an explicit hash zero delay control, 
then that process is suspended from active reason set and it is scheduled into the inactive reason of the current time slot so example for this is hash 0 x equals to y so this event is scheduled in the inactive reason next is nba reason so nba reason holds the events which are evaluated after all inactive reason events are processed and it executes the actual value update for all known blocking assignments so it ensures deterministic behavior since rhs value is already evaluated in the active reason so this is the example so here the value of the b is captured in the active reason and value of a is updated in the nba reason next is observed reason it evaluates the concurrent assertions using the values which were sampled in the prepond reason so after evaluating assertions there would be some pass or fail actions so process associated with the pass or fail action they would be scheduled in the reactive reason and next is trigger clocking so in the observed reason simulator detects the clock edge and triggers all the clocking block processes example is this so here after uh, the value of rec is sampled in the prepond reason and the assertion is evaluated in the observed reason next is reactive reason so this is mainly used to execute test bench code like uh, stimulus generation monitors coverage blocks etc and the procedural statements from the program blocks and the initial blocks also the assertion pass fail actions are also scheduled in this reason so this reason executes after all design logic and assertions have been executed so it keeps test bench code separate from DUT to avoid any race conditions. Also, it ensures test bench doesn't interfere with the RTL updates. Next, we have postponed reason. So the function of this reason is to execute monitoring functions like dollar monitor, dollar strop, which will show the final updated values for the current time slot. So final blocks and PLI events are also executed in this reason. It is a read only reason and the value updates are not allowed here. So example is this. So this final block executes in the postponed reason, which ensures it ensures it, it is it runs after all other simul, uh, simulation activities have been executed. So this is a very simple example to understand the event reasons. So here A and B both are initialized to zero. Next is initial block, which executes at time t equals to 0. So first statement is a equals to 1. This is a blocking assignment and it occurs in the active reason. So this statement would immediately update a, equal, a to 1 in the current timestamp. Next statement is b equals to a. So this is a non-blocking assignment and it schedule update in the NBA reason. So here the RHS is evaluated in the active reason, but update to LHS, this is deferred to the NBA reason of the same timestamp. Next is hash one. So it introduces a delay of one time unit. So at time equals at time T equals to zero, A, A would be assigned a value of one in the active reason. Also the RHS would be evaluated and uh, its value is updated to be in the NBA reason of the same time slot. So A, A would be 1 in the active reason and B would also be 1 in the NBA reason. So next simulation time advances to T equals to 1 and at this time slot dollar display reads the current values of A and B. So this is the output after one time unit. This is another example. So here in this example, cloak is initialized to zero and A is uninitialized. Always block toggles the clock after every five time units. So at T equals to zero, clock would be zero. At T equals to five, clock toggles to one. T equals to 10, clock toggles to zero. And T equals to 15, clock again toggles to one. So this is blocking assignment that updates clock in the active reason. Next, we have the program block. It waits for a positive edge of the clock, 
then assigns value uh, 1 to the A and then displays its value. So program block executes in the reactive region of the same timestamp. So when the positive edge occurs at t equals to 5, then statement a equals to 1 executes and then it displays the statement and uh, print value of a which is 1. So next we have the initial block, second initial block and it would terminate the simulation at t equals to 15 with dollar finish. So at this time, no further positive edges of clocks are processed. So only one positive edge of the clock that is at t equals to 5 is processed and simulation ends before the next positive edge at t equals to 15. So this is the output of the program. Program at t equals to 5, we get the statement program block executed a equals to 1 and before the next positive clock cycle, it terminates the program. So this is the end of my current session. If you have any questions or need clarifications, please reach out to me over this email ID or connect me via LinkedIn. Thank you.